Hello everybody and welcome to this photography breakdown. Actually, it's a uh, editing breakdown on how I do my, uh, how I edit, or actually how I edited these photos in particular. So I just want to show you how I edited this one, this one, and this one. Um, and I want to guide you through the process in this case. I'm going to show you, this is the raw photo. I did a couple of minor tweaks here. Uh, I have, uh, in this case, I was not using it, but I have a, a lookup table presets from Regidu. I think I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I usually maybe just use a bit of this one just to heighten the shadows a bit. I'm going to link, link them in the profile in the blog post. They have really good presets and they are being applied at this raw uh, stage level, which means that uh, they don't you don't do any post processing. They're actually using the raw information and that's why I quite like using them. In this case, I didn't use them, uh, but you can see I usually just use them to lift the shadows a bit. Uh, the default was set. Well, I, I just thought it was a bit too bright, like looking at the histogram here, I just wanted to extend a bit uh, of that information here. So just get a bit of a bit of those uh, highlights back in and I was not concerned too much about the shadows. In a lot of cases you would do some sharpening, maybe some noise reduction. And sometimes I do, I enable profile correction. You can see I was shooting with a Tamron and this was shot on a Sony A7 uh, III. Uh, but in this case I was not using any corrections. Let me just click OK. Uh, let's go through it step by step. So I did a quick black and white correction. You don't, it's not that visible, but it just removes some of the color in the highlights in this case and uh, overall, and this was the mask that I was using. So if you look at the mask, the highest, the most bright areas are gonna uh, get applied. So everything that's white is gonna actually be visible and this uh, effect is gonna take place. Everything that's black, it's not gonna be visible. So for this, uh, I used a black and white uh, adjustment as it is and then I went to images and apply image and that's how you get this mask. Another good way of making masks is using the uh, the TK7 rapid mask. Uh, this is something I use all the time. It's quite cheap. I'm going to link it as well. Uh, I use it all the time um, on portrait shots like this or even just um, environmental shots. I use this all the time to expand the range of my uh, of my values essentially. So this is what's happening here. Then the second adjustment is I was just lifting the midtones. So I was doing exactly this. I was selecting the midtones here, and you can see it's gonna disregard all the super bright highlights, and you can even adjust it here uh, if you wish. And once you have that, it's gonna create a mask. And I just use that mask. Uh, once you have that mask, you just create curves and it's going to give you uh, exactly what I was showing you. So it was this. And then with this curve, uh, I was just brightening everything up a bit just to get a bit more of that pop in my image. The second one was a lookup, a lookup table. So uh, where is it? I have the Cinematica 6 applied and I'm going to link them in the description as well. I think they have a bunch of different lookup tables. I'm, 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 as you can see, I'm using it like just slightly just to get a bit of those colors in a bit of a bit more of those uh, brown colors and it's lifting the shadows just a bit, even though you could do that uh, on your own. But in a lot of cases, I do my base uh, like this and then I apply a lookup table just slightly. Sometimes I don't even use it. Sometimes I use it like at 10%. It depends on the image and what it does to the image and if I like the colors or not. Uh, next up, I was doing some uh, some minor adjustments. I'm not sure what I was doing here, but I think I copied. Yeah, what I did was I copied this image on top 
and then just mask it out just so I got a bit more. I thought the face was losing a bit of details here. Uh, so usually I don't, I don't want to crush anything. I just want to preserve as much detail and as much as I can, even though this was quite a contrasty edit at the end. And then uh, I merged everything together. And then I did a frequency separation just a little bit. You can see it's the slightest a bit here. Oops, there you go. Uh, I just didn't like these, this and this and here. There was a bit of a harsh uh, point in here as well. I'm not against imperfections. I usually embrace them as much as possible. Uh, I think they add additional life to your image uh, if if you use them just slightly. So uh, I don't like to overdo my edits essentially uh, as much as possible. I want I want to make I want to make them a bit of a heightened reality. So I do add a bit of stylization to my edits, but I don't want them to lose that uh, that raw uh, detail that they had. So as you can see, I was applying just a bit of that frequency separation uh, using the median, uh, the median instead of the Gaussian blur technique. And yeah, frequency. And I, as you can see, I overdid it like this. Uh, you can see uh, you lose all the details. Uh, everything goes away. And then I, I, I got it down to like 22%. So. Then I did a color adjustment, as you can see. Uh, and this is something that you might want or not. Actually, I think I like it without more. Uh, but you can see there is some red uh, spots on her face here and some imperfections in terms of color. Uh, sometimes you can see this area is, is a lot more desaturated. And then this part is more saturated. Maybe you don't see it on the recording, but I can definitely see it here. And essentially what I did was I created a new layer. You can see like this, and it's just going to unify all the colors. And the way I did that, it's just a new layer, a brush. You would pick a color, let's say here. I have a five by five average. So you pick a color and then you just paint over it. And you use, you set it to a color preset and you can see you paint over with that color and that's just going to get rid of any kind of uh, different colors that you may not want it in the first place. This adjustment is a bit uh, bigger as you can see it it's quite of a big jump. Uh, essentially what I did was I used uh, the camera raw and heightened the highlights a bit, uh, got a bit of more detail and I also applied a blur just on the highlights. So you can see you get just a bit of the, that bleeding coming through and it gives the whole image a bit of a softer look. Like I said, I, I do like to stylize the image just a bit. Then I removed her from the, from the background. And added her back on top. Uh, and that the reason why I did that was because the background. Let me see if I can. You can see there's a slight difference here in the way the bokeh uh, the bokeh is shaped. And sometimes this works. Actually, I kind of prefer it without in this case because uh, you can clearly see the round bokeh. Uh, but here I was stretching it. Uh, a bit up and down. So the, the way you can do this, you can use a, a plugin called Frischluft. Frisch uh, I'm going to link it in the description as well. Or you can just use um, a motion blur and apply it. Uh, let's see. So motion blur and you just set it to 90 degrees and that's going to Obviously not that much, but just a bit. So it gives your bokeh a bit of stylization. The reason why I was doing this is uh, because I wanted to get that cinematic look as if something was shot with an anamorphic lens, which is something that uh, I enjoy and uh, like doing. And you will see that on the other edits as well. So that's why I would remove her from the background and then uh, add 
that stylized uh, bokeh on the background and then paste her back up and you can see uh, then you would just mask around the edges in most cases you can do that quite well and just retain all the details around her hair I have no idea what this layer was doing oh it's just a just a merge on top and then what I was doing as well is I used a channel mixer here so channel mixer and you set it to monochrome and this is something I do a lot to get those more cinematic colors so you can see something like this you remove all the reds and you you're left with this really kind of nice filmic black and white image as it is you can see this looks pretty pretty awesome as well uh, and then I just downtone the satur saturation and you can see I, I like this quite a lot actually and then you would tone in the vibrance just a bit and maybe the saturation and the vir vibrance and you can see you get this really nice uh, creamy kind of uh, brown skin tones uh, that, that are looking way way more cinematic uh, than uh, like I said this was going for a bit more cinematic film look uh, and this would not maybe fit in a commercial kind of portraiture edit but I just really like the way it looked and what I did was I applied uh, I went here and did a apply image as well or you can use the the rapid mask to get your selection and it looks like this so essentially I was saying oh reduce the uh, make it more monochromatic but only in the kind of the mid-tones but leave the highlights alone and you can see this was the this is the difference that that makes and you can see it applies that creamy because I didn't want to touch the highlights because I kind of I really really like the way they roll off and the details that I was getting in the highlights and I just want that to be applied to my mid-tones essentially and on the skin so this was this edit uh, I this one is a bit more high key a bit more commercial like but still really um, still really cinematic uh, same kind of adjustments let me see Yeah, so on the last one I was applying uh, that glow on top. Uh, for the glow, you can uh, you just duplicate everything, you blur it, and then you can put it through with a, a soft light or a screen, and then you just merge them together to get a nice more glowy look. Uh, let's see how this image started, which I thought even in, in the beginning it was quite nice. Uh, I was lifting, let me go in the raw, I was lifting the shadows on this one quite a lot. Otherwise it looked like this, which is not wrong. I, I thought it was looking pretty decent uh, as it was, but I was lifting the shadows just to get a bit more dynamic range in the image. And you can see I was using that sweet tooth preset and just setting it to 60. Otherwise it was looking like this. And I just wanted to, maybe 50 would be enough. Uh, I just wanted to lift those shadows a bit and make them a bit more flat uh, I did the same thing with removing her from the background and blurring the background a bit you can see the difference it makes especially here uh, you you see you get the, that round bokeh effect maybe it's a bit too much but I really like it because essentially because I was shooting on the Tamron it has a f-stop of 2.8 uh, sometimes that is enough sometimes I wish I had a bit more shallow depth of field in the image I just like the uh, the way the, the reason I like the Tamron is because it's a really good traveling lens uh, it's super sharp uh, super versatile and I just like traveling with it otherwise for and this I took those, these images on uh, traveling uh, on my travel Otherwise, if this was a commercial shoot, I would probably be using some uh, the Sigma art lenses, which I really enjoy. So let's see what's next. Uh, I was just lifting her a bit more from the... So yeah, uh, blurring the background a bit more, lifting her up, lifting the, the mid-tones a bit doing that black and white adjustments, adding some vibrance, adding a lookup table, 
merging everything together. And you can see I was getting those orangey uh, and greenish uh, vibes in the image. I did a frequency separation on her skin just a bit. Maybe it was too much, but I just thought that in this case it was fitting a bit more. Uh, but maybe something like 40 would be enough because I still want to retain some of that detail in on her skin. I was doing another curves, this time just targeting kind of the lower end of our image and just pushing the shadows down a bit. And then I used a couple of gradients to push the shadows down here and down here because I thought this was grabbing too much attention. And then essentially I did that blur on top and this was the kind of the final image. Obviously looking at it now, because I was not spending too much time on this, it probably I would probably bring it down a bit even more, just like this. And probably uh, I would use that, where is that, channel mixer, monochromatic. Something like that and just bring that down like this. Uh, yeah, I would probably do something like that. So it's a bit more darker and you get a bit more of that creaminess as well uh, on her face and on the on the skin tones. And this was a release. Uh, this was pretty much the same uh, edit with the same uh, lookup tables. And uh, in this case, I was bumping up the saturation at the end because I, I wanted to I wanted it I wanted it to be cinematic, uh, but a bit more saturated. That's why I was uh, I was using. You can see th these two images are uh, quite similar because they have really similar edits and colors. Uh, that's why I was keeping them like this. Uh, but this one was done separately. Uh, and for this one, I did want it to feel just a bit more desaturated, a bit more cinematic uh, in terms of how moody everything is. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, kind of the look into the way I edit. Uh, I use the TK Rapid Mask all the time. I use the frequency separa separation. Uh, it's quite a simple thing. You, you can find how to build this on the interwebs quite easily. There's a, a million YouTube tutorials already on how this frequency separation works. I tend to not overdo it, uh, but I use the Rapid Mask all the time and I do a lot of the corrections in the uh, camera raw as well. And then occasionally I use a lookup table or two. You can you can find a lot of really good lookup tables online already. And then the most important thing that I would say is find a really good reference. So uh, I usually go to Joey L. Uh, I find his photography to be most uh, similar to what I do and to something that I enjoy. So what he does is a lot of uh, portraits. You can see that those creamy brown uh, high, uh, skin tones that he does on most of his pictures. And this one is quite saturated, maybe a bit too bright, but in most cases, I really, really like his photography. Uh, he has uh, kind of a naturalistic style to them. A lot of those natural green, uh, green brown colors. Uh, nothing is too high key. They're all of them are a bit more moody, uh, and he has a really nice cinematic quality to his images, and that's why usually I go uh, as a reference for skin tones, for uh, value. So. Uh, how bright something is, how contrasty something is, how saturated something is, uh, and just the, the mood that he captures in the images uh, are quite extraordinary. And he also has a blog and some tutorials on how he does his uh, color grading as well. Uh, but yeah, this is, I just want to show you guys, having a reference is really important. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have a photographer for your references. You can also have a reference from a movie. You can have a reference from, uh, yeah, just like movie references, photo references, references from uh, maybe video games. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a reference. Uh, so it's gonna guide you on your path because a lot of times when I'm editing, I tend to over edit and I'm happy with my edit, but then 
uh, I come back the next day and I can see that something is way, way too saturated. It's uh, you can clearly see where I added the masks, where I was uh, making something brighter or darker. And but you don't see that on the day that you're editing. Uh, and also, if you don't have your reference, you don't know how how bright or dark you have to make something or how saturated because uh, your your eye and your brain is essentially is going to get adjusted to this saturation level. Uh, you're going to adjust your eye to this brightness level and then after a while let's say you go outside for a bit you come back and you 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 don't even see anything because the image was actually really really dark so that's quite important but yeah those are things that uh i tried to take a look at but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this kind of breakdown on this particular set of images uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to answer them and I might do, I'll probably do more of these breakdowns in the future and how I edit and things like that. So uh, have fun and see you guys next time.